Uh, not every character is a more phenomenal success. No, 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 wait a minute. What are you doing? No. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Power Rangers characters. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at Rangers, villains, and allies alike who were unlikable, had terrible characterization, wasted potential, barely contributed to the plot, or were just kind of annoying. We also decided on a set limit of two entries per series because honestly, some of these season's casts were so bad they could have filled the whole list. Ugh. Hey kid, why don't you take a picture of something? It'll last longer. Number 10, Norg, Power Rangers, Operation Overdrive. Yeah, it's short for Norg. There's Cutesy, there's Bumbling, and then there's Norg. Norg is a Yeti living in the cave that Flurius takes over and thus becomes Flurius' servant, though Norg sees it as making new friends. Unfortunately, his bumbling and naive nature can often come off as kinda cringeworthy more than lovable, especially when he has a voice like Big the Cat. If you don't understand that reference, don't Google it. It'll be a priceless diamond! Despite all that, Norg's completely harmless, and has helped the Rangers a few times, mostly because of his friendly nature and his gullibility. After being disowned by his so-called friend in the finale, Norg redeems himself by rescuing Tizon's girlfriend. But why did he need redemption again? He wasn't even that evil. Come on, stupid Yeti. Seems that this, um, this, uh, Yeti, Yeti fought off half a dozen chillers and saved her. Number nine, Mentor G, Power Ranger Samurai and Super Samurai. It pains me to say it, but I don't think you're truly ready to become a samurai. While he's not the worst mentor, we'll get to that later, G isn't really good at his job. We know next to nothing about G aside that he's experienced in symbol training, is apparently Jaden's guardian, and has a motorcycle because. His actor previously portrayed Emperor Grum on SPD, and yet Grum seemed more likable. G's mentoring includes showing favoritism towards Jaden, forcing someone to get over their trauma, and taking Antonio's morpher away just because he wasn't properly trained as a samurai like the others, even though he's already proved himself on the battlefield. Come on. If you don't have the training. But I do! Look, sure, I did it by myself, but I can hold my own out there, and you saw it! At this point, we believe that a guinea pig turned sensei can mentor better than G ever could. I'm impressed. Yes, Jaden's one of the best that's ever been. I was talking about Kevin. Number eight, Animus slash Kite. Power Rangers Wild Force. Remember, Zenaku. What am I supposed to remember? Remember. There's being environmentally conscious, and then there's being a friggin' hypocrite. Animus is the godlike Megazord destroyed by Master Org 3,000 years ago. Though his spirit helped the Ranger several times, his reincarnation totally ruins his character. He returns disguised as a little boy named Kite, who befriends the Rangers, but quickly flips out over pollution. Be quiet. A kid shouldn't talk like that. It doesn't matter whether you're a kid or an adult. This is important. Convinced that humanity isn't worth saving, Animus reveals himself and takes away the Wild Zords, aka the only thing that helps protect the Earth. Duh. But how can we ever defeat the Orcs without our Zords? That, that is, is your problem, problem. Not, not ours. ours. He does give them back in the next episode, claiming that it was a test to see if you guys were dedicated or something. And this is despite already showing their dedication like a dozen times already. Seriously, this self-righteous act destroys any sympathy we potentially could have had for what happens later. Number seven, Sam, Power Rangers SPD. This isn't the first time we've met and it won't be the last. Earlier in the season, Z befriended a little boy who was teased because of his teleportation powers. She knows the feeling. He says that one day, I'm gonna be a Power Ranger. <laughs> and it turns out he was right on the ball. Later in the series, an older Sam from the future travels to the present to aid the team as the Omega Ranger. Unfortunately, the journey turns him into a glowing ball of light when he's unmorphed. So proper character interaction is slim to none. Okay, that's gonna take some getting used to. While Sam is a much needed ally with his own Megazord and futuristic morpher, he has absolutely no character development whatsoever. He's just kind of there. See you around, guys. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Sam. Number six, Troy Burrows, Power Rangers Megaforce and Super Megaforce. Follow my lead. It's morphin' time. The 20th anniversary seasons have had very split reactions from fans, and part of the blame comes from the Red Ranger. Troy is the new kid in town, and has recurring dreams about the upcoming legendary battle. He is chosen to be the Red Ranger simply because he's met with adversity, not that we know what said adversity is. 
On top of a bland character, we also have bland acting. Dreams are the things humans wish for and believe in. They are the goals each of us hope to achieve. The actor Andrew Gray, who's actually a professional model, is always brooding, barely showing any emotion, and delivering his lines more robotic than the actual robot that's in this season. Brunei! You have a mission to fulfill! Troy is living proof that a model's looks don't really hold up without good acting or writing. Super Mega Rangers, that's a super mega win. And stop saying that, God. Number five, Richie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Hey, who's that? Oh, that's Richie. He's the new kid in school. Honestly, Ranger fans, we don't blame you if you don't remember Richie. He first appeared as the new kid in Angel Grove working for Ernie at the youth center. He was friendly enough to everyone, especially Trini, and he made a perfect red herring for the White Ranger, although we all know that it was Tommy, come on. However, after Trini's actress quit the series, Richie just disappeared, never to be seen or mentioned again. We'll only remember Richie as wasted potential. Um, do you want to join us? Thanks, but I can't. I gotta get home. Man, we're still unpacking for the move. Number four, Justin Stewart, Power Rangers Turbo. Guys, I'm the new Blue Ranger. Isn't that cool or what? Justin is a 12-year-old prodigy in high school, just, just go with it, who finds out who the Rangers actually are and is recruited by Zordon to take the injured Rocky's place as the Blue Turbo Ranger. Despite the age gap with his teammates, Justin is actually a competent Ranger, being one of the first to act when Divatox is at large. Divatox! While Justin himself isn't bad, the concept of a younger kid being a Ranger in a sea of teenagers is pretty stupid, come on. The pandering to the younger audience didn't help either considering that kids already gravitated towards teenagers as heroes since the show's beginning. So why did you even need a 12-year-old Power Ranger, right? Justin, you need some help over there? No, I don't need help. help! Number three, Gosei, Power Rangers Megaforce and Super Megaforce. My mentor, Zordon, placed me here to be guardian of this planet. Being the 20th anniversary, Megaforce and Super Megaforce saw fit to introduce another Zordon-like mentor, and that concept ultimately backfired. Meet Gosei. Zordon's supposed protege, something that he only briefly mentions kind of like once. He was brought here as the guardian of the Earth and would only awaken when Earth was under great threat. So where was he for the last 20 years? Don't ask us. There's a simple explanation for that. Not only is his backstory kind of vague, but rather than offer words of wisdom like his mentor, Gosei just hands out new weapons and zords like lottery tickets. Which is cool, but you know, that's not really characterization, is it? Rangers, your bravery has earned you this new power. He gives one last half-hearted pep talk in the finale and is never seen again. Super mega good riddance. This is our darkest hour, but I have faith in you. Number two, Dax Lowe, Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. <laughs> oh, come on, am I perfect or what? There are plenty things wrong with Operation Overdrive. One of the biggest things being Dax, the Blue Ranger. Everything is like a movie to Dax, mostly because he worked as a Hollywood stuntman wanting to be a movie star and wishes to be more appreciated. If only there was anything to appreciate about him. Out of all the monsters that have tried to pulverize us, he was definitely the most sensitive. He acts as comic relief, or tries to, with his shtick being constantly mugging, painfully overacting, and making really stupid jokes. If, if Mac doesn't come back, can I have the Sonic Streaker? <laughs> like the majority of the team, Dax will want to give it up, but he does come back eventually. He also has almost no character development, except for wanting to be a director in the finale. But don't bother asking why. It, because movies, right? Yesterday's news, Mr. H. <laughs> now, I want to direct. <laughs> Before we unveil the worst of the worst, here are a few honorable mentions. Well, well. If it isn't the Power Rangers. I knew that it was just a matter of time. Stop them, Clank. Send the entire army if necessary. <laughs> yep, just like his father. Number one. Diva Talks, Power Rangers Turbo. The Power Rangers will pay dearly. Their beloved Earth will become mine. You know you got it bad when Rita Repulsa tells you off. Diva Talks is the evil pirate queen who wants to conquer the Earth. Why? Because the Rangers ruined her wedding with a volcano monster. Yep, she's that petty. Not only that, but her army, especially her bumbling nephew, are pretty pathetic. And on top of that, her plans are completely moronic. I'm so brilliant. <laughs> For the first half of the season, she would frequently plant bombs all over the city, but would always give them long timers to allow the rangers to find and defuse them. The most frustrating part, despite her petulance, idiocy, and pitiful lackeys, she's the villain that ultimately destroys the power chamber. Embarrassing, right? Bye bye, rangers.
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.